Hey everybody, my name is Logan Wassel. This is EDC Canton, and today I'm gonna show you how to disassemble and clean your Benchmade bug out. Let's get to it. As far as any tools or equipment that you're going to need to take this apart, you obviously need the knife that you want to take apart. The Bug Outs Pivot Screw is a T10 and everything else is a T6 and I've got two of those guys here. You'll also want some lubrication to tune it up once you're finished putting it back together as well as some Loctite to make sure those screws don't go anywhere. I've also got some acetone here to clean off the parts once the knife is disassembled and then just any paper towels or shop towels will do great. Alright, to get started I'm just going to begin with the pocket clip here. Now these screws are a little bit longer than the rest of the body screws, so make sure you keep them separate. I also like to start with the show side of the knife because that's where we have access to the pivot. Each scale has four screws, so I'm going to set those off to the side as well. Before moving to the other side of the knife, I am going to take off the pivot so we can remove this scale. Once you've got those screws off, it's very simple. You just pry it a little bit. It should pop right out. And there is your skeletonized Benchmade bug out. If you guys are curious about how the access log actually works, I'll show you here. But right there are your Omega Springs and you actually have one on each side of the liner. When you pull the access bar back, the knife is released and you'll notice just as it is about to finish closing, the tension will release and it will snap back into place. It's very interesting to see how Benchmade's most famous lock operates and it's probably my favorite lock overall. Now the next step is going to be to get the blade out of the way so you don't have to worry about that. I like using this skinnier screwdriver just to poke through that pivot hole to get the other half of it out. Just give it a little bit of pressure. You might have to wiggle it back and forth and it'll pop right out. Put that pivot over here. Now this is where some of you may get afraid because once you get that pivot out your knife is going to start falling apart like mine just did but I promise you it's not as scary as it seems. I'm just going to get that blade out of the way so it's not going to cut me while I'm working on the rest of the knife. And to release the liner and the locking mechanism, I'm going to start taking off the body screws from the other side here. And once you get these two, then your liner will fall out. There you go. That's your liner and locking mechanism right there. Now your last two screws are just going to be your barrel spacers, and since this is a complete disassembly, I'll go ahead and show you that. Now I'll set all of these body screws aside. And the barrel spacers can go with the pivot. Now another thing you're going to want to keep track of is your washers. Mine actually got stuck in the liner lock. I say stuck, they're just kind of staying there. But a lot of the times it's going to come off on your blade and you'll find the washers on either side of that. So I'm just going to use this screwdriver to slide those out there. And it's actually very easy to take apart and put back together the access lock once you have the liner system separate like this. You simply push it back like you normally would when you're unlocking the knife. And you'll notice the access bar pops down in here. And you can actually hold the access lock and push out your Omega Springs. And they're going to pop out of place. And for me, the springs came out still attached to the access bar separate from the liners. And they're just hooked around the bar, so I'll pop those off. If you didn't know, Benchmade calls this their Omega Spring because it does kind of look like the Greek letter of the alphabet. And I still have my stop pin stuck in between my liners, and that is the last piece that needs to be taken apart. And there's one more thing that I did forget about, the thumb stud, and if you want to clean all over the blade then it's very easy to take that out. You just take your T6, same size as the body screws and the pocket clip. It's a little easier if you have two, but I have done this with only one before. There we go. And now you have your plain blade. Now the knife is completely disassembled and we'll move on to cleaning. I'll just get some of the acetone on my paper towels and you just want to wipe down your blade as best as you can. And this is just a cleaner. It's going to clean your metal very well, and I just try to get it anywhere and everywhere that I can. It does dry pretty quickly, so you're going to need to reapply the acetone to your paper towel fairly often. Now I'll move on next to the liners. This particular bug out is not very messy yet. I do have another one that's a couple years old, but this one hasn't really had a whole lot of time to get super dirty, so sometimes you might find some extra Loctite or 
dried up lubrication stuck in there and you'll have to work a little harder to get it off. In the past, I've used my nail to scratch it off and then acetone to wipe it clean. Definitely do not use any other metal on your liner though. It's a very important part of the knife and you don't want to damage it. The only part of my hardware that I'm going to clean today are the washers. You definitely want a nice, smooth surface for your blade to rotate on. And once you're done cleaning all of your parts, you're ready to put your knife back together. Okay, so after I finished cleaning the parts, I actually did go and acid etch and stone wash this blade. I'm not going to go into it really in detail here in this video, but I'll link another video where I explain the whole process and show how I did it. I'll link that video in the description and you can definitely check it out there if you'd like. I think the best thing to do when you're putting back together your bug out is to put back the liners together with the spring. So one thing you want to start with when you're putting together the liner is actually get the stop pin in place. And it is a D shape, so you just have to make sure that you're putting that in the right way and it'll lock right in. And then you put the other side of the liner on top. And this will just make things much easier when you're trying to put together the rest of the piece. Next up, I put the axis bar back in and slide that up into place. I'll take the Omega spring for this side and you'll notice a hook as well as a little latch that's curved over. I like to start with the hook. Just snap that in there and then you can kind of flex the spring to fit in that notch in the liner as well. Then I flip it over and do the same thing on this side. And there we go. Now our liner system is back together. And then for the rest of the knife, I'll work clip side up. When we took it apart, we worked on the show side first, and now we just do it in reverse order to get back where we started. You can see the liner fits in that scale nicely. And then I'm going to take the blade and get the washers ready. And I'll actually just take some of this lubrication. I have Benchmade Blue Lube. There are many others that work. KPL is a great recommendation as well. This is what I have, so that's what I'm going to use. And I will just put a little circle around the edge of that where it's going to go. That washer will go right there. And then it'll keep in place a little while. I'll turn it over. And then do the same thing on this side. Now, this is going to be the most difficult part of getting it together. I do recommend having something skinny or small like a screwdriver to kind of put through that hole every time you just need to recorrect. I'm going to put my blade, my two washers, and my liner all in together first. Then I just have to make sure I know which side the pivot is going to go in. Again, this is a lot of guess and check. It's not super fun. I don't have any surefire way to get it every single time on your first try. I'm going to try it from this side now. Everything is lined up there. I'm going to drop that tube in. Again, just pull back on that axis lock to give you some slack. And there we go. Pop right through. Now what you want to do is, oh, before I forget, you do want to put in your barrel spacers. Otherwise, you'll have to take the scales back apart to put those in. And they're not too difficult at all. They'll sit in pretty nicely and they shouldn't give you too much trouble. All right, there you go. And you can put the other scale on top. And I'm just going to sit that down for a minute. It shouldn't go anywhere. And what I like to do is just squeeze out a little bit of Loctite and kind of twist the thread in it. And it's important for the pivot screw to have Loctite on it because once you tighten your knife to its right retention, you don't want it to be falling or getting loose on you. You want to be able to have no blade play, but still that drop shot action. For now, just to keep everything together, I'm going to get it pretty tight, but then I'll loosen it up to my liking towards the end. There we go. Now nothing's going anywhere. And we'll just do the other screws, the same process, one at a time. I'll squeeze out a little bit of Loctite, put it in the thread, and then screw it in. Now I can't emphasize enough the importance of not putting too much pressure when you're tightening the screw. This happened to me the other day, where too much pressure combined with the Loctite made it impossible for the screw to get out, and it ended up stripping, and it was a huge hassle to remove. And the pocket clip. I usually like putting the screws through the pocket clip, and then lining it up on the body of the knife. Unless you're messing with your blade like I did, you really don't ever have a reason to take off the thumb studs. They should be perfectly fine. I get it started by hand. And then like I said, it's just a little bit easier if you have two T6 tools to tighten your thumb stud that way. Now this is probably too tight to drop shut. Yeah, so this is a really, really tight action right now. What I like to do is see there's no blade play. And then I'll back it up a little bit. All right, there's no blade play there. And it doesn't, yeah, there we go, it drops shut perfectly. 
If you have to choose one over the other, I would definitely recommend choosing the no blade play option rather than the drop shut. Theoretically, if you have no blade play, then your Loctite will do its job and keep it that way, and then eventually your knife will wear in and you'll be able to drop shut it like this. And yeah, that's pretty much it. This is the complete disassembly and assembly of the Benchmade bug out. It's a little bit intimidating at first, but once you've done it even one time, then it's much, much easier as you move forward. If you'd like to follow me on Instagram, you can find me at edc.kansen or just edc.kansen at Vero. And then of course, like, comment, and subscribe right here on YouTube to see more content just like this. See you guys next time.